Today on Monkey Life. The team at the park's sister sanctuary in Vietnam do their best to care for little Quy, a rescued duke monkey who's just arrived at the center. We have a team of four people at the moment trying to keep little Quy going and getting stronger and stronger. Golden-cheeked gibbons Lewis and Tung take to the trees in preparation for their return to the wild. It's a huge step for them and vital to being released back into Kachian National Park. And slim down Loris Zuli finds a mate. Monkey World in Dorset, buried deep in the English countryside, is the largest sanctuary of its kind on the planet. The team, led by Dr. Alison Cronin, rescue and rehabilitate abused and unwanted primates from all over the world. This is a new start of a new era of the releases for the gibbons, which we need to get on with. The park provides a home for more than 260 primates from 25 different species. Six thousand miles away from the park in Dorset, Monkey World's sister sanctuary, Dao Tien, plays a major part in protecting some of the most endangered species in Vietnam. Set up with the full support of the Vietnamese authorities, it was the brainchild of Monkey World's director, Dr. Alison Cronin, and her late husband, Jim. With the illegal wildlife trade increasing globally, conservation is becoming a priority for the country, which now has more than 30 national parks. Many of the primates arriving at the center have had a poor start in life and are in desperate need of expert care. Kui, a seven-month-old black-shanked duke who arrived just last week, is one example. It's been a roller coaster. Um, not only the nutrition, but mostly because we don't have another duke his size and duke need duke. If they don't have stimulus and contact from a duke, they just close down and go to sleep and they can very easily die. Dr. Marina Kenyon runs Dao Tien, along with her partner Lee and a team of dedicated Vietnamese staff. They've been rescuing and rehabilitating gibbons, dukes and pygmy loris for more than 15 years. Kui is the 22nd Duke monkey to come through the center's doors since they opened in 2008. The circumstances surrounding his arrival are all too familiar. Kui was found in the hunter's house on his own. It's highly likely that mum and a few other family members were shot. Sadly, it's increasingly popular now to eat Duke meat. The hunting of Duke is greater than we think, and it's increasing. So it's one of those things we need to try and create so much awareness for at the moment, because before we know it, they're going to be struggling. So while the population is still strong, we need to make sure the world realizes how wonderful they are, but most importantly, with their own kind in the forest. The team at Dao Tien have managed to successfully rescue, rehabilitate, and release back into the wild nearly 200 primates. The island reserve in the Dong Nai province of Kat Tien National Park measures around 56 hectares and has enjoyed success with large numbers of pygmy lorises. The sanctuary also leads the way in the rescue and rehabilitation of black shanked duke monkeys just like Little Kui. It's become the prime center in the region, necessitated by the ever-increasing black market trade in the species. Black shank dukes in the wild live in a fission fusion society, so from small groups of six or seven to big supergroups up to around 80. So a duke in the forest is never alone. So to try and imagine how it feels for Kui now, without any other duke around, there would normally be a sister, a cousin, someone else to play with. 
The infant Duke have lots of play behaviour, which we saw with the other ones, like Blindman's Buff. So the thought of being on your own is really, really tough. So stimulating Qui with other Duke is so, so important, because without it, he's not going to make it. So now it's time for sleepy Qui to go and meet the Duke. To help Qui through this difficult period, the team are enlisting the help of three young Duke monkeys who arrived just before the global pandemic struck. Vu, Anna and Red. Fong, head of specialist care on the island, has been the trio's main carer. She's built up an amazing rapport with the three Dukes and that trust has been reciprocated. They're keen to get a closer look at the small and fragile new arrival. While it's vital for Kui to have this interaction, these three aren't a permanent solution to his plight. Marina is hoping the older Dukes will soon be ready for release back where they belong, the high tree canopy of the Vietnamese forest. They're growing up fast and plans for the next stage of their development are more pressing each day. The Dukes this year will be four years of age, so they're actually reaching sexual maturity. And this is another reason why we need to keep pushing forward with our plans. Um, we have three boys and one little lady, Anna. So we need to try and release maybe one unit, a male, female unit, and also two boys as a separate band. But luckily these social units do occur in wild dukes. So it's all good and they're physically fit. They're socially well equipped, but the next stage, who knows? Hopefully, the team will be as successful releasing Dukes as they have been with Pygmy Lorises, one of Dao Tien's biggest successes. Unfortunately, they've had more mixed results when it comes to releasing golden-cheeked gibbons, also often the target of hunters and the black market trade. As part of their efforts, the team follow a strict protocol. Gibbons in the process of rehabilitation, or who will never be fit or well enough for release in the wild, are categorised as phase one and kept in secure enclosures. The rest of the gibbons live in the phase two semi-free areas on the island. These cover more than 20 hectares and help the gibbons get used to life in the trees before release. But the size of the island limits their ability to range, so the team need to supplement their diet daily. Along with Marina, there are 10 Vietnamese staff dedicated to feeding and caring for the primates. But the island also needs constant maintenance and infrastructure checks. And that's the responsibility of Marina's partner, Lee Butler. We've got so much to get done. We've got four fence repairs to do, get them back operational. We've got cages to refurb. Every day there's something new happens and every day Every inch of Dao Tien has to be checked. For the last few weeks, Lee's been in a race against time trying to repair some of the protective fences surrounding the semi-free areas. During the COVID pandemic, it became impossible to keep everything in good working order, and there's been a lot of catching up to do. I've decided is that we're going to take the cables out, uh -huh. which I've started, and then we'll get these all cut off there's a lot of fencing to check. We've got a 850 meter fence line and at least two thirds of that needs some type of maintenance. Um, and that's primarily uh, on the overhang part uh, where some of the joints are actually snapped, where trees have come down um, or the strain on the wire has, has pulled them back. Lee's thumbs up from the final checks are what the team's been waiting for. It means they can now move Tung and Lewis, a pair of golden-cheeked gibbons, into the large semi-free area to start the next stage of their rehabilitation. This will free up space for the three Dukes, Vu, Anna and Red, to be moved into a smaller enclosure where they'll have access to the trees. If everything goes to plan, the move will happen in the next 24 hours. It's an early start today for the team on Dao Tien. 
After weeks of planning and checks, it's time for the golden cheeked gibbons to take the next step in their rehabilitation. They've come from a cage. We can't just put them straight into Captain National Park. So we actually create an area where we can give them part of the forest. This will help them brachiate better, it will improve their condition, and it will also train them to eat different types of leaf, different types of fruit, um, and then that process, hopefully, they can then take to Katia National Park when we do their release. It's a far cry from where they came from. Tung, a six-year-old female, was found abandoned in the car park of an apartment complex in Ho Chi Minh City. Lewis, the male, is a little younger and was found tied to a cage with a collar around his neck. Thanks to the dedication of the team at Dao Tien, they're now promising candidates for release back into the wild. Tung and Lewis are taken to a release cage within the semi-free area. They'll spend the night here getting used to the sights, sounds and smells of what will be their new home until they're ready for release. This is a vital part of their rehabilitation um, and we have to work hard toward understanding and making sure that they can do this next process before going to Katian. The younger we can do it with the gibbons, the better and hopefully better success rate we'll have because they'll have less imprint from human behavior and activity. Work on the island never stops, whatever the weather. It's 24-7 for the team, looking after the gibbons during the day and then preparing night feeds for the lorises. Rehabilitating and releasing lorises back into the wild has been a big success story for Dao Tien. Out of 144 rescued, 131 have been returned to the forest. And the lorises keep on coming. Almost all rescued or confiscated from the black market trade in Vietnam. There are currently 16 pygmy and Bengal lorises on the island. One of the most challenging they've had to rehabilitate is Zuli a pygmy loris who arrived extremely overweight. He was double his normal weight, 800 grams, fed lots of banana, and he was fiercely angry, wanted to bite humans, wanted to, if you, you couldn't go in the enclosure with him, he wanted to come and attack you. And that isn't normal loris behavior, that's a loris that's been messed up in the pet trade. So over the last two and a half years, we've been working with him to get him to weight, but also to calm him down, to stop him being so angry, and slowly over the months, he settled down. Several attempts to partner him up with a female failed. But Zuli now seems content and settled with Bin. For Zuli, this is huge. It's taken us two years to get this fat, angry Loris to be thin, handsome and social. So we agreed that he passed the test to go to the next stage, which is this forested enclosure. The team have just moved Zuli and Bin to a semi-free area for lorises, where they'll be monitored for two months. Considering his background, it's a huge step for the small loris. If Zuli passes the test, in two months we're going to get a radio collar on him and release him. So this is really exciting. We've had lots of different variables of loris from the pet trade or how long in the trade, but we've never had one so humanised and messed up like Zuli. But he's done so well and he's earned himself a chance to be released. And all the team unanimously want, think that he's good enough to go. So hopefully in two months we'll have a collar on him and then we can track him post-release for seven months. So come on, Zuli. Zuli's progress is a perfect example of the rewards for hard work and dedication enjoyed by the care team at Dao Tien. With Tung and Lewis waiting to be released into the large semi-free enclosure, Lee and Fong are preparing to move the three adolescent dukes into the area the golden-cheeked gibbons are vacating. But before that can happen, the trio need a health check to make sure they're clear of any parasites or disease they may have picked up from having close contact with humans. There's also another Duke monkey needing to be examined today. 
His name is Peter, and he was brought to Dao Tien by the authorities a few months ago, having lived in captivity for four years. We actually put Anna with him when he first arrived, and it's a, an important step for any new arrivals, really. Um, they need that stimulus. If you get one on their own, it's more difficult to get them out of shock or potential shock. So the importance of Anna going in with him, interacting with him and stimulating him actually helps us get him through that critical stage of being taken from the wild, kept as a pet, transported to Dao Tien. It's a massive, massive step for him. The issue for the team is that Peter is not very human orientated. And while that's a good thing, it brings some challenges. Releasing him with the others isn't an option just yet. If we allowed him into the semi-free, we probably couldn't get him back. But most importantly that, than that, we have quite a lot of males. So we have Red, we have Boo and Peter, three growing adolescent males. And sometimes there can only be one big male. At the moment, the leader of this group is Vu. He's quite a, although he's smaller than Red, he's the alpha male. And when they went in with Peter, they went in kind of strong, playful, pulling his tail. But Peter was way too scared with, about this. And he actually went down to the ground and he's been quite nervous. So at the moment, Peter is still just living side by side with the other three, gaining confidence. And also importantly, Peter is gaining weight. When he arrived, when we did his health checks, he was skin and bone. He has now gained over two kilos from eating his luscious leaves every day. The team need to come up with a plan, not just for Peter, but also for Red. He's a grey-shanked duke and can't be released into the wild with Vu or Anna, who are both black-shanked dukes. As a result, over the last few months, the team have been scouring the island for a suitable location to build a brand new duke facility. They've also been searching out fruiting trees, suitable for a new duke semi-free area. Come on, Honky. Mm, con con Kuli. Uh, Kuli. Kuli, come. Vok, 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 vok. Oh, no. <laughs> this isn't it, but hopefully they'll find the perfect spot. For now, Vu, Anna and Red are moving to their new forest enclosure, where they can access the trees at will and Peter will stay next door. Caring for the delicate dukes is a full-time job. Kui has milk drinks round the clock, morning and through the night. Um, initially, he didn't want to take any milks and he was very dehydrated, so it was quite scary at the start. But now he's getting better. Um, as you can see, he gets quite excited about his milk drinks. And they're so little, they're so sensitive, with incredibly sensitive guts. They can be quite greedy monkeys, so they often inhale fluid, so you have to be very gentle. You need to give them a reason to live. You need to give them their family. That's why we work so hard. We have a team of four people at the moment trying to keep little Kui going and getting stronger and stronger. So at some point, he can catch up with the other larger Duke, then ultimately be released back to the wild, which will be exciting because we've never... I don't think there's been any other Duke releases done back into continuous forest. So if we can develop protocols to get them back into the forest, that would just be brilliant. So any other Dukes in the future, in the future can find a way back home. It's release day. Tung and Lewis are about to be let out into the large semi-free area. And the three Duke monkeys, whose health checks have come back all clear, have moved to their new caged enclosure where they'll have daily access to a tree-filled outdoor space. But first up, the two golden-cheeked gibbons. It's a huge step for them. They're young enough to be released, and this is their next vital step to being released back into Katjian National Park. The pair have spent the night in a release cage, getting accustomed to their new surroundings. Now, they're anxious to be off. Mr. Dung, Dao Tien's head keeper, opens up the slide. Lewis doesn't hang about. And seconds later, Tung follows. Mm -hmm. 
They're soon up high exploring the tree canopy where they belong, totally at ease moving through the branches. So far, they're doing well. First time since being youngsters, if they were taken from their parents in the forest, first time released into a forested area. And you know, they're just being gibbons. It's just amazing to see how dexterous, how agile, how effortless it is for them just to move around. Lee and the team watch for a few minutes before leaving the pair to enjoy their freedom in the trees. Next, it's the turn of the three Duke monkeys to be released into their new outside enclosure. Since arriving at Dao Tien, Anna, Vu and Red have been given the opportunity to live as natural a life as possible. They're now accustomed to spending their time in the trees, and the larger area with its much higher tree canopy shouldn't daunt them. After a slight hesitation, they're off. All three heading up high, full of confidence. It's exactly what the team were hoping for. I'm feeling so hopeful that these guys can make it. They've grown up in the trees. They're so physically strong, they're socially strong, they're pulling away from humans very strongly, like any stranger now who goes near them, they don't like it. So, yeah, I, I really, really think they can do it. We just need to find that perfect release site and where the local community support the conservation of Duke. That's the key. It's just, you know, it's amazing. These primates have had something taken away from them. We're just trying to give that little percent back. Next time on Monkey Life. Infighting in one of the capuchin groups leads to surgery for female newcomer Louie. We've had to just cut through the joint and just remove a little bit of bone so that we can close the skin over there. And warm winter treats for the orangutan nursery pals.